Hey everyone, Dan here. Before we get into it, if you enjoy these videos, please hit the like and subscribe button, it helps a lot. And also keep in mind that these are my own thoughts, opinions, and ideas. These are not meant to be, nor should you take them as investment or trading advice in any way, shape, or form. Do your own due diligence, put in the work for yourself, and make your decisions based on that. Enjoy. All right, everyone. So here we are a little after market close on Tuesday, August 24th. We're going to take our daily look at SoFi. SoFi having another nice day today. So basically three back to back. What did we have on last Friday? Plus about one and a half percent, two and three quarters yesterday. And then today, a little over two and a quarter. Um, and so still looking quite nice. Uh, now somebody had asked in the comments and it's a very fair question. Um, as you know, I approximate on many things and I had mentioned, you know, as we look at today's volume of almost 13 and a half million, I had mentioned, I'm really looking for this to, you know, roll up into the 18, 20 million, uh, volume range on green days. And they sort of asked me, where is that coming from? And it's honestly, it's not a great, uh, equation or anything like that. Basically what I'm looking at is since the shares unlocked and we had this big sell off, let me get to the right time frame. Since the shares unlocked and we had this big sell off, um, you know, obviously we had days where we were in like the 50 millions. Um, but you know, we see here 19.8 million, 25 million, 19.8, uh, 17.4, 18.2. So this is a range where with a lot of, uh, sort of trading activity, we see SoFi, you know, can sustain that, especially given the additional float or the larger float that it now has. And so being that that was what brought us down with a lot of selling pressure, a lot of selling volume on those days, sort of what I was looking at was that being a, a good benchmark for SoFi to start to move toward in order to uh, pin its green days to that. So if there's buying pressure coming in, that sort of is synonymous with the selling pressure that we saw here that brought so much pain to so many folks uh, who were trading or, or investing in SoFi at the time. Um, so that's one of them. And then the other is basically sort of in line with that same idea that I have around why I would like to see them focus on snatching membership and getting those numbers really, really strong. Because I do think that there's an element of just visibility uh, the knowingness of SoFi. And one way to get to know that, I mean, you see this playing out with Robinhood, right? Uh, that they're, they've always had a strong focus on acquiring users and members and growing those as sort of like their, their top most out front uh, metric that they're uh, sort of leaning into. And I do think that there's a premium that's paid for that for better or worse in this like period of time that we're in with SPACs and growth stocks and, and things like that being given a much more leeway, a much, much more leash in order to get their fundamentals in line. But if the membership growth is there and the membership numbers are high, then I do think that there's a premium place in that by institutional investors, um, you know, private investors, uh, all anyone who funds that startup from seed through series D E, what have you. Um, and then, you know, also the degree to which that bleeds over into retail. So I think that the attention on the stock um, that that volume would bring is sort of a good initial benchmark in my mind. That's a good level up for SoFi. But then I would like to see it continue to move more towards something like we see with Palantir or Neo, you know, some of these um, stocks that are also in like growth stages. And um, I mean, they're, yeah, they're very different companies, but but th there are some similar similarities in the life cycle there and the volumes at which they're encountering on a day-to-day -day basis. I mean, Palantir, for example, 35 and a half million, 51, 67, 91, 35, 45, 52, 189. I mean, that was after earnings, but even leading up to earnings like teens, 20s. So this would just sort of like put it more on par with some of those stocks that do get a lot more attention and are just much more well known. And I do think that that could help um, buoy the stock price in in some way, shape or form. But it's not the be all end all. But it is one of the many factors that, that I look at. And that's my long winded explanation as to why. Um, so 
the degree to which that helps clarify anything. Um, and, and folks can disagree <laughs> in the comments. What else are the comments for if not to, you know, talk about everything that we disagree about? It's fine. Um, but anyway, SoFi, uh, I also said that I would mention this when it happened, and it happened. Today, I took some additional shares in SoFi as I'm trying to preempt. So it's a little bit riskier of a position. I'm trying to preempt this potential bullish crossover that we have here. Basically, the equation that I went through in my head when I decided to take some more shares at this price was um, the following. Obviously, this bearish momentum, if it can actually be crushed here and stop here, this is much well, this is like a fraction of what this bearish momentum was, right? And obviously, there's some very practical reasons for that, like lockups, larger lockups and things like that. But also it's now established well over my 1411 zone here. And now today uh, made a very, very close run at testing that 1502. It jumped up at highs today, 1493. So it's under, it was within, within nine cents of that next resistance level that I had plotted. So um, to me, that's obviously moving in the right direction. And overall, now, I know it looks a little dippy lately on the MACD coming down here, but overall, if we look from stretching back here into mid to late July, this is a nice bullish uptrend on the MACD, even with this huge interruption that we saw after earnings. So those were sort of my factors in deciding that this was a level to buy in at. Now, additionally, I'm giving myself uh, sort of definitely leeway for this to come down and test this 1411 zone again. I don't think that that would be the worst thing. Uh, I think that there could be a lot of like healthy um, reaction to stringing together a, f a few green days for a stock that's been so beaten down um, to test its most recent support level that it's jumped over. Um, and if it does, I'm I'm fine with that. If it flips that 1411 to resistance, then I'll be a bit more concerned that I might sort of hop out or, or decrease my position in, in some way, shape, or form. You know, that said, it's all in flux. Um, I'll do my best to keep mentioning when I buy or sell. And again, it's not because I think that anyone else should be buying or selling. It's just what I'm okay with given what I'm seeing at any point in time and for the goals that I have. These are longer term, you know, position holdings that I have, even though I could hop out of them and then hop back in later. Uh, that doesn't mean to me that I have to hold through everything just because it's, you know, the goal of that position is is to go longer term. I still want to have the best basis for that longer term growth. Um, so do whatever you think is best given your own knowledge and the things that you're seeing and what it is that you're trying to accomplish. I don't know what anyone is trying to accomplish. I'm not here to personally coach anyone and definitely not give anyone advice. This is just me sharing in order to share. Um, but yeah, so I did that today and, and for those reasons. And that sort of like kind of sums up what I'm seeing on the chart too, right? The, the, the only other thing that I would say is this 20 MA coming in, the degree to which it sort of coincides with the time frame in which the price action, tr uh, like once again, attempts 1502, that could add additional pressure from a resistance perspective to, to the price action. So we'll just have to see. Um, obviously, the next the, the next like big triggers in my mind are if we can get this bullish crossover to actually happen. Like I said, I preempted it today. So this could this could like bounce off tomorrow and just come down further. Um, but if it continues to bullishly cross over, then that's an elevating factor in my mind. Flipping this 1502 from resistance to support would be a huge elevating factor. And at that point, probably this 20 MA is up very, very close to or is underneath the price action, providing additional support and lift potential to bring us to try to cross the MAs. Uh, the 20 crossing over the 50, which would be a huge, um, you know, potential jump up as we've seen happen back here, right? When that happened back here, we had a very nice run up from, from that crossover. Uh, 2015, it closed out on that day and ran itself up to, as you see, 24.95, which is a good percentage gain, obviously, for a stock at that price. So we'll have to see. Um, I don't know. But, but that's what I'm looking at at the moment. Now, on the quickly checking in on the data side of things, Ortex update today, just a slight increase in the short interest. So I also took this as 
potentially an additionally good sign. Um, so while I think that the short percentage being over 10% could add pressure, I didn't see them piling in hardcore today, even though SoFi continued to come up. So my hope is that this might um, keep them at bay a little bit. Um, I don't know. But, you know, the coming days will obviously lend more credence to either direction <laughs> of whether they're, they're going to pile in or not. Um, and then also, I mean, I guess I didn't I didn't really front of mind think this, but I do think rolling around in the back of my mind are the, you know, the insider buys that have been happening. Um, the degree to which I, I don't know if that really, really means anything. You don't know the degree to which it's optics versus practical realities um, of folks that know things that are that are changing and evolving on the inside. Um, and even if they think that those things are super, super bullish, you know, the public reaction and the institutional reaction to, the, to that news could be different. Um, but you never know. But I, I guess while we're talking about it, you know, I'm sure that is sort of like rolling around in the back of my mind, adding some additional sort of like bullish voices <laughs> in my head. But that's where I am after today. Um, you know, I hope that your trading week is going well. And for sure, you know, share your thoughts, opinions, comments uh, below, and I'll do my best to answer the ones that I can, you know, to the degree to which you have super important things that you're trying to, like, say, feel free to repeat them. And I'm sorry that I can't catch everything all the time. I just, I just don't have time. Um, additionally, you could you could tweet them at me. Um, I did start a new Instagram today also. Um, it's at Walkabouts with Dan. So I'm not quite sure exactly what content to put on Instagram yet or how it would be different, but I'm going to try it out and see what happens. And, you know, um, but if you're there, feel free to follow. I think I may still have no followers at the moment. But um, yeah, so uh, I guess that'll do it for this video. Um, but I, as always, appreciate you watching, and I will see you in the next video.